here's one from Furati. Again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, so I apologize. Furati from Tunisia. Um, as you know, airlines do not hire any pilots with low hours, um, and there's a lot of jobless pilot, cadet pilots. Um, type rating costs a lot and is not terribly affordable. Um, profession must work on a solution. So, uh, first of all, I would agree with you. I wish there was a better solution for the industry. Although this is an age-old problem, this is the exact same problem that I had when I was coming up uh, through the ranks. Nobody would hire you without multi-engine time, and nobody would give you multi-engine time to get hired. And yet we all made it. So how did we all make the leap? If we all made the leap, you can make the leap too. Now, first of all, I'm going to push back on you and say um, airlines do hire low-time pilots. If you don't think they do, go look in Asia. Go look at uh, Vietjet. Go look at um, uh, Indonesia. Go look at China. Uh, go to the websites for the aviation recruiters like Richworth, uh, VOR Holdings. For the first time ever, they're starting to actively hire first officers. But in your particular uh, region of the world, it may be true. It may be true that there isn't going to be a low-time uh, pilot job opportunity. So what are you willing to do to pursue the career? Are you willing to go to Asia and fly for a while? If that's your option, boy, I would jump on that. What a great experience. It would be a great adventure. And when you come back, you're going to be the top of the stack because you're going to have lots of experience. Do I agree there needs to be a better solution? I do. Uh, I don't have the answer for that. I'm just trying to provide the solutions that work within the, the context of what we have in the industry now. Right. So you just look at the cards you're dealt and play them the best you can, and, and sometimes you have to go somewhere else to get better cards. <laughs> and and, and I, I do want to reassure, all yeah. of us did it. I had 250 hours once. Every mm -hmm. single one of those airline pilots uh, the 50-some thousand that we saw on the previous table had 250 hours once. We all made the leap, and you can too. Right. Um, and here's a real similar question. Um, 265 hours and a commercial ME and a type rating. So what can you do? So, Pablo, there's a couple different pathways. Number one, there's flight instruction. That's the old proven uh, pathway. Uh, to build time is to get a flight instructor job. And the good news is the schools right now are losing their flight instructors at, a, at an alarming rate, so there are opportunities to go instruct. It's a great way to give something back to the industry. It's a great way for you to build your experience, and nothing teaches you how to fly better than helping to teach somebody else. However, if you don't want to do the flight instructing route, there's still other routes out there. There's uh, banner flying, there's uh, towing gliders, there's uh, flying bank checks, there's uh, freight jobs out there in single engine and twin engine airplanes. Uh, there's the commuters. Right now you can't get on with a commuter, by the way, until you have 1,500 hours, so uh, you've got to build some time to get to those. The other thing, as I was saying to the previous uh, question, there are job opportunities outside the United States. And you should consider those. If you have the ability to travel to Asia and to work in the Asian market, you might actually be able to land a job flying an Airbus or a Boeing. It's not going to be easy. You're going to have to go beat on doors and make your own opportunities. But nothing um, worthwhile in life is going to come easy. It's all going to take a lot of effort and work. So. Keep your options open. There are a number of venues out there, a number of avenues out there to build time. Uh, the first thing is build your single engine time to get to that 1,500 hours and get your ATP. Uh, once you get your ATP, I really think you're going to be snapped up very quickly by the commuters. Fantastic. Here's a similar question as well. I'm looking for the fastest way to get time in an A320 to fly the Chinese carriers. Joe from Florida. Okay, so Joe, uh, depending on whether you want to fly uh, as a captain or first officer, so here in the United States, they don't really have a lot of opportunities to do what they call pay-to-fly programs, and I'm not a huge advocate of the pay-to-fly programs. I think if you've got a type rating, 
uh, on your certificate, you've got your commercial multi-engine instrument, and you're interested in flying as a first officer, then again, I would reach out to the different uh, pilot placement services. Uh, Richworth, VOR Holdings are two of the ones that I see a lot of, and uh, inquire with them about uh, placement as a first officer. I also wouldn't hesitate to go online, do your due diligence, and start putting in applications uh, to the foreign carriers uh, to see if they'll pick you up based on just having the, uh, the type rating. So again, it's a question of beating on doors. Well, you know, Paula, my whole career, people had told me, uh, you have to have perfect vision to be a pilot. And you know what? Half the guys I fly with have Coke bottle glasses. <laughs> I've heard that you have to have a four-year degree to be a pilot. And yet, one of my best friends in aviation does not have a degree. Uh, and he is a major U.S. airline pilot. Uh, all of these things that people say, well, I don't have this or I don't have that, I can't make it. You know what? What you're reading when the airlines put that information out is their wish list. But if they can't get enough applicants at that time that they're hiring to meet those requirements, then they will look at the applicants that are coming in because they're not going to not hire and not fill those seats. Hey, Dave, this is John. I uh, personal experience from a good friend of mine who flew checks in a uh, Baron along with my son. They both got out and went different ways. Uh, but this individual went to India and jumped into the left seat of an Airbus 320 with only about 300 hours. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, – it was it the left seat or the right seat, John? He was a first officer? First officer, sorry. Yeah, in the right seat. Absolutely. I, I know lots and lots of people now that have bridged the gap, um, gone overseas, and, and there are so many naysayers that say – it won't work, there isn't those opportunities, it can't be done. And then you keep running into individuals that say, I did it, I here's did it. my experience, here's who I worked for. So I have a tendency to believe the people that have actually done it over the people that haven't done it who say it can't be done. 